Hello, everybody. Welcome back to your Saints Gaming League of Legends. John Bilbang Zedima. Joined here by Ashton Ashnutter, and uh, that was a pretty nutty game one, would you say? Yeah, uh, like like I was saying before we went to break, that was a labyrinth or a roller, co roller coaster of emotions. It was, oh, the Saints are going to win. Oh, the Bur uh, Burham is going to win. And it, it just went back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. Kept us on our toes, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. And I think uh, the MVP of that game for me definitely was E-Hug. Uh, struggled a lot. In preseason, but in regular season, he looks like a completely different animal. So, yeah, we're going to see first ban out of Durham is going to be that talent. They don't want none of that. First ban from St. Clair is actually going to be the Galio here. So, interesting they would ban that. I think – I don't think he was – he was very impactful in that game. Obviously, his ultimate had a lot of impact on the team fights. But I really think the struggle there was more on the Silas. I think he just couldn't deal with him in laning phase and wasn't roaming properly. So I think that might have been more of the issue. And actually, we're going to see no Yone ban out of St. Clair here. So they're going to ban the Aphelios and the Zinzao. So we did see a Zinzao ban. Pretty strong character right now. Uh, our champion right now. But not going to see a Yone ban. And interesting that we wouldn't see that. Why do you think St. Clair is leaving that one open? You know, I think they're testing the waters a little bit. I, I would say one of them is like, you know what? Let's see how good he is, because that's that's the only reason I could think they wouldn't want to ban him. They they know that he is a one trick on Yasu, so or Yon, sorry. Yeah. So I'm I'm not sure what's going on there, but we do have a Rakan coming out as the first pick. Yeah, interesting so. that we see Rakan as your first pick there. He's a pretty good engaged champ. Didn't see him in pick or ban last game, so uh, and we also didn't see the Aphelios in pick ban last game. But like we said. We see the two more top bands coming out of Durham. And they banned, we saw five top bands last game. And Ricky still popped off on that set. So I think uh, you can't ban out Ricky. He's just too good on too many champions. And I think Durham has discovered that. We're going to get a support pick for Durham here. They're going to pick up the Leona. So a good answer into that, Rakan. Uh, a lot of disengage for Rakan onto that Leona. But if Leona can land that E, Rakan has a really rough time getting out of it. So... A uh, good answer here, and I'm very interested to see if we uh, if we get that set again for St. Clair. They didn't ban it out from Durham, so still has a chance to pick that one up. But but there are a lot of good answers into that set. So uh, what do you think? I think if they get that set back, they will definitely have a very good advantage here. We have uh, Tristana coming out, so I think that could be preemptive against a set. Uh, Tristana can be, mm -hmm. she, she can be pretty, uh, terrifying. Yeah. Her R is very good for, uh, pushing set out of a fight and definitely keeping them away from where you want them to be. Looks like they are going to pick up the Zaya though. So we do think at the Zaya Recon in the bot lane and that's going to allow Barlow and Fresh to have a lot more freedom in this bot lane, able to, uh, roam early and to give themselves an advantage. Uh, Tristana Leona will do a lot, a lot of damage to this, uh, Recon Zaya combo early in the game. And we are going to see a Jarvan out of the St. Clair Saints here. So Eha going to be moving from that Assassin onto the J4. Definitely uh, hoping to look a lot different than uh, Juju looked for Durham in game number one. And it uh, looks like we'll probably get a Jungle Lancer, I would assume, out of Durham as well here. So how do you feel about Ehug playing the Jarvan? Uh, more of a tanky Assassin compared to the Assassin he played last game. Um, I think it's going to be a massive difference in the play style he does. I don't think he's going to be getting as many picks as he got last time. Uh, just because he had such an easy way to get picks on the last character. Mm. But uh, this this could be a better choice um, in terms of he, he can play a little bit more carefully or uh, he has, I guess, more yeah. tank. And it looks like we have a Skarner coming out of Durham. And Skarner, uh, very, I don't know, very limited amount of usage in pro play because as of now, a lot of new champions have a lot of answers for him. So Durham's actually going to ban out the Silas. Uh, Silas, obviously, a lot of good ultimates on the side of Durham, both the Skarner ult and the Leona ult. Very powerful uh, for him to pick up here. But as I was saying, Skarner uh, has a lot of counter to his abilities. They have the Rakan charm uh, for his ultimate, and Jarvan has the knockup as well. So Skarner's going to have a really hard time just picking someone up and getting him out of a fight without Jarvan ulting on top of him or Rakan ulting him. So I think it's a good answer into the Jarvan specifically for skirmishing, but I think later on in this game, Skarner... Not going to have as much relevance. Uh, obviously does help set up Leona, but still I don't think it's as powerful of a pick. And uh, definitely going to see if Ehug can go crazy again in this game over Juju. So we are going to see that Camille ban again. I'm kind of wondering, uh, who, who is it that banned that? Looks like St. Clair banned the Camille and Durham banned the Silas. So looks like there it is. So the set will be banned out. 
I'm not going to see another set for Ricky this game, unfortunately, but uh, hopefully he's got another answer for, for Durham here. Yeah, so we are seeing some bands that we were seeing last time too, like the Zin Zhao, like the Silas, like the Camille. I'm wondering if these are champions that the people or the, the players on these teams know that they 100% just cannot go up against or if they're just worried because of that new patch that came mm -hmm. out. Yeah, for sure. And it looks like we will have the mid laners and top laners picking here. I think most likely we'll see a NAR for one of these sides. NAR, uh, a very good safe pick in Season 9, Season 10, and Season 11 that we're in. Uh, as kind of been a quintessential blind top lane pick. So most likely we'll see that. Oh, we are going to get a Malphite, actually. So interesting pick. We do have the Skarner Malphite angle, but I really don't know if I like this team comp from, from Durham. Not because it isn't strong, but I think there's just so many good answers from St. Clair, especially that Zaya with her ultimate it is just as long as you have that reaction time, as long as Barlow can hit that R button before Malphite comes down onto your team, uh, it's definitely going to be a lot easier for them to handle team fights. But uh, again, you do have the Malphite Skarner combo, and I actually we're going to get the Talia here. So, Talia, if you didn't know, uh, recently buffed in this last two patches ago, and she is super strong in the jungle right now. So, Talon and Talia both got really good buffs. Talia, uh, her Q cooldown is shorter. Her worked ground is shorter, so like her area of effect where she pulls up the rocks from, that's smaller and has shorter cooldown. Her ult has shorter cooldown, so she is super powerful uh, in jungle and in mid lane. So that's a flexible pick for both of those. And we're going to see a Nico pick as well here. Yeah, so uh, Nico maybe in the top lane, maybe in the mid lane. Uh, Jarvan could go in top. I don't know. So there's a lot of flexibility here for St. Clair. Definitely, a lot yeah. of different ways they can play this one. But uh, I really think this Malphite pick is not looking so good for uh, Durham at this point. I'm glad you told me about that Talia uh, yeah. buff because I had no clue about that. And I was I was sitting here like, yeah. I don't know if that's such a great pick there. Ooh. But we are going to see uh, from the side of Durham a pick on Irelia. Yeah. So I'm guessing that's going to be their top laner. Yeah, uh, it could go top. It could also go mid. So Malphite and Irelia can flex between those two roles. But I really think this is going to be an interesting one. I think... Uh, I really like the team comp out of Durham. I think St. Clair as a good team comp if they can pull it off properly. But I really don't see a lot that they can do because other than Jarvan, who isn't innately that tanky, there is no tankiness from the side of St. Clair. They have the Rakan, who's uh, more of an enchanter, but they're going to have to play these team fights very carefully. And it's going to be really hard to uh, try and give yourself a lot of room for mistakes here in game number two. But... They are up a game, so they do kind of have the flexibility to say, okay, there's some stuff we want to try out, see if it works, and if not, there's always another game you can play. You always have the game three, so give themselves a little bit of a challenge, say, okay, if we can, because if you can pull this comp off successfully, you're looking really good for the rest of the season. Oh, yeah. It's definitely going to be a little bit of a, a boost on uh, morale, that's mm -hmm. for sure, because um, other teams are going to look at us and say, like, you know, they they chose an interesting pick there, and they still managed to you know if if we get the two and zero here, they managed to two and zero Durham. So that's that's a little scary for other colleges and universities. Yeah, for sure. And I think the top lane we are gonna see uh, most likely a Nico. It could be the Jarvan in the top lane. You could have a Talia jungle and a Nico mid. Uh, it's definitely a possibility, but I don't think the Jarvan does very well until this Malphite in top lane. So I really doubt that that'll happen. Malphite can pretty much handle himself against Jarvan. Jarvan going to be the all-in, but we'll see here what Ricky picks up. So it is going to be Jarvan in the top lane. So that'll be an AD Jarvan going uh, most likely either Lethality or Gore Drinker possibly as well. So uh, interesting that we'll see that one locked in for a top lane there. And I do like the, Jarv the Talia in the jungle. I think that's very, very strong, but... I really don't know about this Jarvan top. Ricky, I mean, although, you know what I have to say? Ricky's looked good every single game he's played. So if there's anyone that can pull off a good J4 top, it's got to be Ricky. That's true. He's definitely kind of leading, for example, here. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of showing off a little bit, yeah. I do got to say. So it, I, I think uh, they have a decent chance here. But at the same time, it's, it's like you said earlier. It all comes down to the fact... They don't have a tank. They they don't have that tank that they need to, you know, get to in team fights a little bit easier. Yeah. So I'm kind of interested to see how they play, whether it's careful or if they're just going to, you know, uh, yeah, disregard sure. any sorts of uh, carefulness and just dive right in for attacks. Yeah. I really think this Talia is actually doing pretty good. We didn't really talk about the Irelia. Irelia uh, right now is super strong. She's been nerfed, I think, three or four times in the last four patches. So 
She's been, uh, a lot of her power has been taken out, but still a strong pick. Has a lot of agency around the map, and she has really good clear, so she can kind of push herself around the map. Uh, Nico will have uh, a little bit of a problem there with Irelia in the mid lane, but should be able to handle it um, and be able to roam just as much as she will. So I think my eyes really this game are going to be on E-Hug. Can he um, do as well as he did last game? I think last game was an anomaly. Normally you don't see someone up 100 farm at, you know, like 15 minutes. I, I think that was just an incredible game from him. And I want to see him repeat. And I'm looking through this bot lane for Barlow and Fresh. I think they really need to step up. We've seen the last couple games Barlow's played. He's gotten caught out multiple times playing too aggressive. Um, so, although he does have the Zyra Recon, they do have a little bit better looking laning phase here. Still, he's going to have to be careful. There always is a threat of the all-in level 2 from Leona Tristana. So, they are going to have to be really careful of that. Um, but, yeah, I'm looking for Barlow to step up, seeing if he can uh, carry this one out for his team. Um, I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on Nico and Talia because Nico is kind of like a, if you get killed off early, if you're not uh, careful enough, then you're going to kind of fall off, not really be helpful, or you have the chance to become extremely fetisher and do a lot of damage. Talia, I'm interested in seeing because, again, I didn't know about that that buff on yeah. uh, two patches ago, I think you said. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of interested to see how she plays out, how different it is from before because I know... Uh, a couple patches ago, it was it was a little. Uh... Yeah, she wasn't she wasn't nearly as strong, but they yeah. reworked her a bit, gave her a lot more agency. And she's able to play a lot more now, and her mana struggles in the jungle aren't as big because she's doing more damage and she has more room to work with. So she's a lot easier to play. And I think for me personally, I I'm gonna give this one to Durham. I think that they have a much easier team comp to pull off, and I think as long as you keep your Tristana alive and you keep the mid lane stable, I really is able to eventually hit a point where you're not going to be able to split push against her. Nico can kind of just hold her off for a while, but eventually uh, when she gets towards that level 18, you have that Leona Malphite engage with the Skarner ult that's going to be so insanely threatening for the lives of St. Clair. You're just going to have to basically pull off perfect team fights or else it's going to go towards Daryl. Yeah, and uh, I definitely think, you know, I'm still going to stay strong with that 2-0 uh, uh, prediction I made, but mm -hmm. I think you, you're you probably going to be right about that 2-1 because, yeah. you know, it's... Uh, I think team comp-wise, definitely looking Durham favored. Uh, although, you know what? I would love to see St. Clair put up a challenge definitely. here and pull off this team comp because it is not an easy team comp to, to you know take advantage of. But if they can do it, it looks so much more threatening for other teams as well because if you can play the standard team comps and you can play those uh little bit out of the ordinary team comps play them well it looks so good for you because you have that flexibility and teams aren't going to be banning out uh the couple champions you can play yeah definitely so uh this i uh, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how it turns out i'm holding strong with my 2-0 and, and uh you know it's going to be interesting because we're at a little bit of disadvantage here. Yeah, I think so. And I'm really hoping that Ricky is going to be able to pull off this top lane as well as he was able to pull off last game. I think Set really is his bread and butter. I think that champion is looks so good on him whenever he plays it. And I think Jarvan, definitely a, a lot different champion to play, doesn't nearly have that kind of engage-disengage tool that Set has. Set has the W for escape and the E for engage, whereas Jarvan, basically you're just all inning on your EQ and you're hoping that you can do more damage with your electric Q prof than the other guys are going to do and Malphite early game doesn't really do that much damage. So it's not too, nothing big to worry about. I think more he'll use it to give himself an advantage in lane and allow Talia to China, just uh, free roam the jungle without worrying too much about anyone else. The Skarner obviously not going to be too much of a threat until he hits level six, but still it's always nice to have that jungle advantage and, and you know, have the lane priority. And I didn't really talk about this, but I think the lane priority is actually going to be in St. Clair's favor um, in I don't know about bot lane, but definitely for mid and jungle, definitely going to be in St. Clair's favor. So they will have a lot of control over this early game, which they didn't really have last game. Obviously, Talon getting ridiculously ahead was helped them get an advantage in early game. But I think this game, not so much, but still will have it. So we'll see how they try and play that one. And uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for this yeah. one. Uh, I'm going to say one thing I'm going to look out for is the Nico again, because mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I know one thing that always gets me is when she can turn into another player and like fake <laughs> her health bar being low. Oh, yeah. So I'm interested. I'm interested to see if anyone falls for that and kind of jumps on her and then finds out. Oh no, she has like full health. <laughs> yeah, here we are, game two, St. Clair College versus Durham College. St. Clair up 1-0 in this series, fighting 
to win this one. Durham fighting to stay alive in this series. This is definitely going to be interesting. It seems like we're going in for an early Ooh. invade, which we did not see in the first game. Oh, yeah, so you see the fake... Oh, never mind. She didn't use it. <laughs> I was going to say, so what What would have happened there was she probably would have turned into the Jarvan and then walked... It looks like Skarner's not going to be aware of this, so they will have an advantage here. We'll go for the W, but doesn't manage to connect on that one, so nothing too crazy. Early game, not going to be too much of an advantage. They will ward that, see if she can take this, and she actually picks up the Spire of Skarner's there, so... Kind of down to half HP, most likely we'll just back here, or he'll just scuttle it. Yeah, he's going to walk over to his other buff. We'll have to pop the pot, though. So, slight advantage, actually, for this Talia here. And she will actually get that Spire, too, which gives her an advantage in the jungle. So uh, I was thinking that Talia was going a little bit too far up, but, you know, no one stopped yeah. her. So, it kind of just worked out in her favor. And her passive helps her out there, too, because she can... As long as she's riding along the wall, she gets extra 30%. But I really is in a bad place here. Will they go for this fight? It's going to be three on two. Oh, she's going to start the stun, actually. Flash going to come out as well. So really good level one here. Malphite will try and walk away. Will pop the pot here. Will keep himself alive. A lot of damage from this Talia early. Will she go for the flash? Try and... No, Malphite going to flash first. She's going to go for the flash. Will it hit Q? Connect. It is going to be up. Oh, and she's going to get first blood. That's going to be first blood for E-Hug. And this jungle already looking better for St. Clair. Yeah, we're doing a little bit of a repeat here from last game, getting that first kill, starting off the game strong, you know. Everyone's probably, like, thinking now they won that first game, and they're they're probably thinking they got a pretty good chance here. So, uh, bot lane, we're just going to see a little bit of trading abilities and still, you know, getting their CS. Nothing too crazy. Oh, so we actually have uh, Ricky going in the mid. The Jarvan is going to be mid against the Malphite, and Zephyrot and uh, Hectic will be in the top lane. So a little bit of change of position here. Looks like level two all in onto the Zaya here. Bomb will go down. The Ignite's going to go down as well. Will the auto come out? Oh, nice big W, but not going to be enough. Kyores is going to take down Fresh. Will Barlow stay alive here? He has the E up, but will not pull it. And like I said before the game started, that level two. Oh, Jarvan's going to be here for an answer, though. Really good roam here by Ricky. He's going to go for the kill, and that's going to be a nice kill. For Ricky in the mid lane. Nice roam level two. Able to get there before the jungler and keeps this game at a St. Clair advantage. Yeah, Jarvan definitely came down and basically said, No, nah, you don't get to uh you don't get to bully my laners like that and you know, made it back so it was one more score above for the for the kills. So yeah. It definitely seems to be going uh, a little bit of, like I said, a little bit of a repeat of last game. Nothing too, too crazy yet. Just, uh, you know, trading abilities, some some fights, some fights. But, uh, you know, what, yeah. how do you think this is going to go so far? Uh, a little bit of trading here in mid, actually. Malphite actually getting the better of Ricky here. Ricky taking a beating from this rock. Uh, but I think Tristana, I did say at the beginning of the game, that level two out of the Tristana, Leona, there is no one better at level two than Tristana Leona. If she's able to get knee on you and the ignite down, you're basically just dead. There's nothing you can do about it. So uh, I think St. Clair definitely need to keep that in the back of their minds. They were able to get a good pull. And, and the only reason they actually ended up being positive there, oh, she's going to miss that W onto the Malphite. Definitely would have been a kill there. Good try on a gank in the mid. But like, like I was saying, you have to be aware of that level two and you have to keep that in the back of your mind because, you know, you do try and pick up this early game advantage by getting that kill in the jungle. But... The kill in the bot lane comes down and it's just even, right? So a little bit of carelessness there by Fresh and, and Barlow. Not really aware of what was happening and it cost him a, a life in the bot lane. Yeah, uh, I, I will say it seems like Malphite is soaking up a little bit of damage throughout yeah. this game so far. Well, that's his, when you play Malphite in a lane, <laughs> that's just what's going to happen. Until yeah. you get help from your jungler or your level 6, you kind of just sit in lane and say, okay... Um, and, and no one can really hurt me too much. I'm going to take some poke, but it is what it is. It is what Life it is. That's fight. exactly what it is. <laughs> oh, oh good W. So, nothing too bad going on. Still just so, trading some. Some Fresh is going for a couple of little, uh, you know, uh, pokes there, here and there. But nothing's really working out for him too much. It seems they're kind of staying even on trades yeah and i'm looking for maybe another mid lane roam from jarvan here jungler uh roam as well possibly e hug comes down here but no summoners for either side in this bot lane so definitely looking like a juicy gank sometime soon uh for both sides here and uh obviously we do see both sides with the long sword on the adcs they picked up early so it will be about even it looks like nico and jarvan will actually switch here so jarvan will be going to the top lane uh, we'll see maybe if Irelia wants to follow. Irelia's actually going to be on a flank here behind Zephyrod. Zephyrod has no idea. Oh, a nice flash there with Gilway at the kill with the auto. 
So he's going to be even, but she will have to find her way out of this one from the Irelia. Skarner going to be collapsing here as well. He's level 4. Doesn't have the ult up, but I think just going to go down here. Irelia will pick up the kill. So in the end, one for one. Good roam there by the Irelia. And just another trade back and forth between the two teams. Yeah, if Nico could have gotten out of that, that would have been a nice little... Uh <laughs> feed for her yeah. to get ahead and uh, it sucks that she wasn't able to but you know that's how it is you, you trade kills sometimes and that's just how League of Legends goes out. Yeah and it was really important that she actually hit that Q there because if she doesn't flash if she misses that Q on the flash she not only is she down her flash she's also down a kill because she will definitely go down to the Skarner and the Irelia so Talia with the roam here and bot. It does seem like Talia is going to get a lot of damage soaking up on her. Fresh is going to come in and get that rest of the damage, but then Talia got that last hit. So that's going to be a nice little uh, uh, kill for Talia there. Keep her ahead of the other jungler, who is uh, still 0-0. Uh, so that's not terrible, but not great. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, Malphite moved back up to top lane, so I think he's going to try and stick there for a bit and see how he can fare against the Jarvan. Yeah, I think Jarvan will be pretty much dominating this game uh, throughout the laning phase, at least Malphite already at 0-2. Uh, and he is significantly weaker during laning phase, basically until he reaches level 6, which he just hit. So he's going to be a lot more useful now. We'll be able to survive a lot better in lanes as he now has his escape. Looks like Sun is not going to make contact. Level 6 here on the Miko will come down. Jarvan not going to hit the EQ combo, though. And TP will come in for the Malphite. Malphite also level 6, so will be disengaged here. Both support and jungler roaming. Oh, a good W there. Almost a kill on Aurelia, but she is barely going to walk away. Hectic, thankful to be spared for the moment. But uh, a lot of damage down on Talia there. And uh, E-Hug look, e looking just as good as he did in game 1. You know, I gotta say, we were worried about that Talia pick, but it seems like already uh, it's it's seeming to work out in uh, St. Clair's favor with that 2-0. and And, you know... Uh, it seems she's going to definitely have, or not she, but Talia is definitely going to have an advantage over uh, the enemy jungler. Yeah, you can see already she's just towering over this jungler. Farm is about even, but again, stealing the red buff. Double knock up here actually onto this ball lane. Jarvan doing a lot of damage to Cyrelli. Going to be a fight here. Malphite are going to go down to the two though. That is super important. Flash up by Talia. Hectic is going to get Zephyroth and Talia. Look, tries to survive here. Does have a red buff, but Leona is going for the 1v1, and that's going to be Jarvan. Oh, no, he's going to get stunned up in a Q by Malphite. He's going to go for the bush. No, he won't get there in time. Blastmate will not save his life. Mothback going to try and... No, he's not going to join in here. Will they go for a dive? No, looks like Malphite going to go down. Will land the Q. We're going to bear survive, but I really going to get the kill. Malphite able to walk out. Oh, she almost died from Tower Shot, but she lives. And uh, really, really well played there by the guys from Durham. And I think the most important thing, Leona being there and Rakan not being there was so huge in that fight. Definitely. And for a second there, it did seem like Irelia was going to tank that tower hit and get taken out. But no, she got out just in time. And, you know, it, that that is definitely going to put Durham ahead for a little bit. So let's see how they... Uh, they are. They did get that kill on Talia, like I said. So uh, maybe not as much of an advantage anymore. So... This, yeah. this is definitely getting more and more interesting as we go. Yeah, Aurelia at 301, definitely uh, a lot stronger than this Nico right now. And you do see actually level 6 on Tristana. So that's why when uh, Rakan walked down, they couldn't go for an all-in on this Tristana. She does have ult, whereas Rakan does not. So maybe once Rakan hits 6, they might try for an all-in on this bot lane. Looks like they might be looking for it here. Aurelia is roaming down through the river. Will she walk up here? Skarna going to collapse here. And this is not looking good for Barlow and Fresh. They're going to try and make it out of here. Level 6 is on the Zaya, though. She just barely got it. So Tristana, oh, nice kill by E onto that Tristana. Jumped a little bit early and went into that E from the Talia. Talia will throw down some more damage onto Nob. Will he be able to get out? They will try and walk out here. Rakan here as well. Not level 6, though. Zephyroth going to join him. Nice R wall there by Talia. Will seal the fate of these two players. Oh, looks like actually Tower is going to hit Talia there. She will go down. Hectic going to pick up another kill. Nice stun. Will go down onto the Skarner. He will go end up dying. Barlow going to pick up that kill. And it ends up being a one for two, actually, for St. Clair. So well played by them. Definitely looked a lot worse for uh, Durham there. But somehow Aurelia managed to pick up a kill and made it look a lot better than it was. Yeah, and uh, definitely it gets to that point where it's like Durham was ahead. They had an advantage, and then St. Clair yet again comes in, mm -hmm. and they're like, you're not winning. You're not winning. You're just, no. <laughs> yeah. So they, they, they're only one kill ahead, obviously, but, you know, they, they're they keeping uh, their team ahead. They're making sure that they're, they're not really at a disadvantage here. Yeah, um, yeah so the... the 
Talia did get another kill, so she is three and two now. Uh, I'm kind of wondering how this is going to turn out because she was kind of fed. She she was two and up, right? She she had a pretty good advantage at the beginning, but now she's starting to even out in her KDA. So I'm kind of wondering how this is going to work out for her because that is a risky pick. We were talking about that uh, before yeah. the game started. And I think obviously. She did pick up a kill and two assists there, which is just more gold in her pocket, making her a lot stronger. And, oh, Rakan, that is not where you want to go, but he will be forced to use his ult to try and get out. Go for the W, but he doesn't realize Skarner is going to be here. Skarner with the ult. There is going to be two TPs coming down simultaneously here. We'll see if they can survive. A TP will come down. Ricky is just going to have to EQ out real quick. Missed stun by Hectic there means they will get out. Talia with some significant damage onto this, onto this Skarner. He will go down here in just a second. Ricky. With a nice ult, but Malphite going to be here too. It's going to be a full 4v5 here. Ricky looking for something here. Nico going to be sneaking up here. Ult is available. We'll go for the flash. Ult going to get all four members. A massive stun onto all four members of the Durham there. And that's going to be a big Malphite up. It's not going to matter because they're all going down. Zephyroth with a massive Nico ult is going to get three. And that's exactly what St. Clair ordered. That was an absolute crazy play. Malphite had almost gotten away, and then Jarvan just came in was like, nah, get back here. And then they managed to take out pretty much the entire team just like that. Yeah, that's going on the highlight reel. That's oh, where yeah. that one's going. <laughs> that was a beautiful flash out by Zephyrati. Did have to sacrifice his life, but it was 100% worth it. Not only did they get three kills, they get the shutdown on Irelia, and they also get the dragon off the back of it. So uh, just 100% positive play there. They're now up 3k gold. Uh, Harold will go down in mid here. We'll see. It'll take a couple plates. Oh, it actually won't. It looks like an ult going to go down on Talia, though. She will. Oh, beautiful sidestep on the sun. They're going to keep Ehug alive here for the moment. No ult by Irelia either. And that is so huge. A lot of investment there for the side of Durham and not gonna find anything for it. So Jarvan is going in for some attacks on Malphite, even though Malphite did initiate it, but it doesn't seem like that really worked out for Malphite. He's down to below uh, half health and Jarvan just came out with a couple of hits on him and he's fine. Uh, that did not work out for him though. Not at all. So like it seems Nico is going to try and go in and help a bit, but... Oh, this is going to be tough. They don't realize Nico sneaking up. Irelia also sneaking up behind you, so it will be a 3v2. Talia on the backside, but a lot of damage going down on this Malphite. does have ult available. Talia will join the fight here in a second. Not going to make contact with the Q until the last one, though. But Talia out of mana is crucial here. Nico going to be here as well with the Irelia, but nice kill with the double buffs there, helping out getting that kill on Talia. But Irelia will take him out. Nice knock up there. We'll keep him dead for a while, and that's going to be Ricky. Picking up another kill, and, and St. Clair just winning all these team fights now. That Aurelia did not know what she was getting herself into when she walked no, into that bush, and that did not work out for her at all. She just got deleted right away. So uh, I do gotta say, Skarner, I know he's a champion that's supposed to like you know pull in some enemy champs and hopefully get kills for his teammates, but he is 0-3 right now, and that is looking very bad for him. Yeah, I think Talia 100% having a lot more impact in, in this game. And up 30 farm, looking really good. And, and he hug just looks like a different person now in these games. He just, every single time there's a close team fight, he finds these clutch E's and these clutch knockups uh, to keep his team alive, to keep uh, good peel for his teammates, to allow them to escape these team fights. And, and even the bot lane here, Tristana at 131 and the Zaya at 206 is looking, Barlow looking so much better on a more proactive ADC, which is exactly what we wanted to see. Exactly, yeah. And I'm going to note that that Jarvan is 5-1 yeah, right now. Yeah, that, that looks like, <laughs> like you are saying, it doesn't matter what you ban out on Ricky because he's going to pop off no matter what he's playing in the top lane. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter. <laughs> So it does seem like there are going to be some picks going down here, but nothing really happens much. They're just going to back off. Nothing really happened. But uh, it does seem like Tally's trying to get away from that Irelia. You know, nothing happens again. Uh, top fight going on down here, or up here. Jarvan and Malphite. No one's really going in for too much, but oh. no, it seems Jarvan oh. is just dead here. Yeah, no. Oh, is oh, he going to He can live? actually fight this. Oh, he, yeah, he might actually live. be able to take Malphite there. Okay. Oh no, good no. flash. Wow, this is this is definitely another roller coaster because uh, uh, Malphite gets taken out right there, but Jarvan, he kept going up and down in health so much, and I thought he was going to get killed, but he just kept peeling it back up and going right back in. 
Skarner is going in for a fight that doesn't really seem too safe to go in on, but he's going to do it anyway. He he really is not making the best decision here because he he is very yeah, behind. Back up though. Uh, so it does seem like Irelia is going to go in for a fight and get taken out pretty quickly. Skarner going in to help, but gets taken out as well. The, it seems like Durham is just starting to feed right now. Yeah, I, I really think the Skarner pick is just not doing. It's what not it doing to. any justice. It's honestly, Skarner went in for a fight there that I think he knows he could not survive, and he kind of just said screw it and just did it anyway. Yeah, and it looks like here, 1v1 here, Zai going to go on a nice route. Gale Force will be used as well, but not going to get the kill. Will just barely stay alive there, and uh, you know, it really has been a, a di jungle difference in both of these games. You know, we saw the Jarvan in that first game for Juju, and, and obviously... I think the set pick was really helping out a lot of priority in those jungles. Uh, was able to give him a lot of flexibility on that talent. But even in this game, like, the Skarner and Talia were pretty even in the first couple minutes of the game. But it just seemed like every team fight that Talia showed up. And, and here we go. Here we go. So Malphite is going in with Jarvan on a team fight. And it seems like... Uh, oh, I called him Jarvan. Anyway, so uh, Leona gets taken out, but they're going to continue the team fight here. It seems like Durham College is taking a lot of damage. St. Clair is not really taking any sort of negative effect from this team fight, so it seemed like Durham made, a, a again, a bad decision there to go in on a fight that they... They really just lost, what was that, three of their champions yeah. on? Yeah, and, and you look at the item here too, right? Like, this Malphite has not even a full item yet. And Jarvan is at Gale, or at Gore Drinker and Sterix and Boots already. Like, Jarvan is so far ahead of this Malphite right now. It is almost unplayable for him. Every time he comes into a fight, it just seems like he's doing no damage. And the problem right now is not only is the Jarvan behind, but this Tristana, or sorry, not the Amalfi behind, but this Tristana and this Irelia are both still staking out one items. They're both pretty far behind as well. Uh, Irelia is really your only source of damage in these fights. The the Skarner and the Malphite are really not going to do anything for you because these guys just haven't had an impact on this game. You can see, I think Skarner's gone up like maybe 10, 15 farm in the last five minutes, and Talia went up 30 or 40 farm. So they will. Oh, they're going to find him. He just greedy barely back. makes it out. Yeah, greedy back by Zephyroth there. But it did cause five people to go down into this bot lane to collapse. So five people sent for one kill. The dragon is not up for a little bit, so not going to have to worry about that uh, for now. But like we said, it took basically five people collapsing for St. Clair to say, okay, you know what? It was a greedy back. It is what it is. He was pushed a little bit too far forward. But, but it doesn't really matter at this point because they're so far ahead. I mean, unless we get to really late game and the Irelia starts popping off, it's going to be so hard to play these mid-game fights. So it does seem like Durham is going into another fight here. They might get this first kill, but Jarvan is hiding around the corner. He's going to no come in. Not. Oh, it seems like Jarvan is actually going to keep doing more damage. They're not doing anything no. to him. Oh, my God. Jarvan is way too tanky right now. There's no one that can take him down. And that's going to be another kill for Barlow. Taking up the double, and maybe they want to go and try and finish this or finish these guys off. Baron, not available yet, not available for another minute, but it just seems like, oh, they're going to go for this fight, actually. Malphite all going to go down. That's going to be a shutdown onto the Talia, and not going to get that knockback either. So it is going to be Zaya getting the kill, though. Tristana still barely alive here on this backside. Zaya trying to fight to push towards mid here, and a couple members will be up here in a 10 seconds or so. I really look him back, so it looks like they will try and just get this turret and run out. Zaya will get it with the other one. Nice E by Barlow on two members. Is going to knock him up, but they're not going to go for the fight. They'll just be stopped, and they'll go take the turret and leave. You know, I got to say, for most of these teams' fights now, uh, <laughs> seems like Jarvan's going in and just control alt deleting these characters. Yeah. They stand no chance against him, and they, they keep going in for fights against him, thinking they can, but then he just comes around and it's like, you do no damage to him. Yeah, and, and I think the Gore Drinker is the real difference here. He has so much like tankiness with that item. He can walk into fights, and, and because it is Irelia, Skarner, Malphite, Leona, like you have to be walking up into him, the melee distance, to fight him, and that's where Gore Drinker is the strongest, is when you can get that AoE heal, bring yourself back up to so much HP, and it, it just looks so hard for Durham to try and come back in this one. Your Malphite's at 2.7, your Skarner's at 0.5. 
Uh, just really looking like St. Clair has this one in the bag. I really don't think you can call it anything else but a jungle diff when our uh, Talia... Oh. oh my god, there's a team fight going on again. So it seems like, who is that? The Tristana is taking a lot of damage here. She's not actually looking like she's going to die. Oh, uh, yeah, she got that ignite oh, on her. Oh, good flash! Oh, okay, so uh, two of the enemy players are getting knocked up, and Skarner this gets taken out, of How course. is Yug still alive? Oh my goodness, what a man. I'm surprised that Malafite lasted as long as he did. Yeah, that's going to be the ace, that's going to be the game. And St. Clair just looked so good. The jungle top duo looked unstoppable in this game. Barlow played really well. And a beautiful, like Zephyrot, although the stat line may not show it, his presence in team fights made all the difference in this one. Yeah, and uh, again, that jungle diff, the Skarner is... 0-6 right now with three assists. I don't. Oh, they're gonna yeah. <laughs> they're gonna taunt the enemy team by killing them in Fountain here. But we know it's over. It's I don't know why he would pick Skarner because that was such a a bad matchup yeah, against so. uh, Talia. It's it went so poorly, and I think that's really what changed the tide of the game is the lack of jungle for the Durham college yeah for sure i think the talia pick you show we showed its power we said it was one of the most powerful picks in the game right now because of its recent buffs and the e-hug showed exactly why he looked so good on that talia he was exactly where he needs to be in team fights and i think you know what the thing is i said if they can well coordinate their team fights and they can win this game with that comp it looks so good and i think yeah. the thing is too you can't ban out like ricky jarvin four on top lane is such a niche pick and he made it look easy he made it look like the best best top laner in the game and Malphite couldn't do anything he just had no agency in the game so uh definitely for other teams looking at ricky there definitely a dangerous player and we did see a lot of respect bands thrown to him he had what six bands in in both games so he just looks so good yeah um and you know st Clair dominating that game in every facet it looked like a little bit dicey at the early levels a lot of trades coming back and forth we saw uh, the level two from Leona Tristana trading out, and we saw a scuffle in top lane that ended up in Malphite picking up a kill. But regardless, mid game looked flawless for St. Clair, and they ended up closing out the game uh, yeah. really well. And this will be very good uh, on the image of St. Clair for uh, going in early season yeah. being uh, 2 0 in this game. Yeah, and your prediction was right. You 2 0 it, you called it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I can see that I did call the 2 1, but I think St. Clair just dominated that game, pulled off the team comp to perfection. I think Zephrot looked a lot better in game two than he did in game one. Definitely had a couple moments where he did overstep a little bit of a greedy back there. We did yeah. see him kind of die at the end, but that four man flash with the Nico alt really sealed the game. Cause after that fight, it just seemed like everything that Durham threw at them, it, it didn't matter. Cause the Jarvan was just too tanky and the Talia did too much damage. You saw at the end there, Talia somehow managed to survive against four people by herself. Yeah, that was that was interesting. She she had a lot of good plays that helped her be so like high up there mm -hmm. in in terms of KDA. I think one of her best plays this game was when they were in bot lane and she put up that wall so yeah. that it trapped off two of them and then they just got that like three kill uh, yeah, on all three of them. Definitely uh, a really good wall there and I got to say my MVP for this series uh, it's got to go to E-Hug, man. He dominated Definitely. the jungle. In both of those games, Ricky had really good games as well. But Ehug, both of those games, that Talon made the look Talon look unbelievably good. And that second game, impact all over the map. And just every time that Skarner tried to get anything done, it seemed like Ehug was there already and getting stuff done before he could even answer. So uh, I think both Ricky and Ehug deserve it, but I got to give it to Ehug in this one. Yeah, that was definitely a good uh, early game season. And I think... Uh, with that, there's definitely going to be a lot of confidence going around. So. Yeah, so that's going to be it for this one. St. Clair, take this series 2-0. And I want to thank our sponsors uh, for supporting us in this wonderful endeavor that we have. I want to thank Crunchyroll, our new sponsor. Uh, if you guys want to get a 14-day premium trial for free, crunchyroll.com slash saints. Remember it. Go watch some anime. Everyone here loves anime. We all love anime. I'm sure you love anime at home too. So you want to check them out. Be my guest. I want to thank all our other sponsors as well. We got Tim Hortons. We got Subway. We got the SRC and St. Clair alumni. We couldn't do this without you guys. We really appreciate you. Yeah, so this has been a good stream, and we wish you all a good night. Uh, so, you know. Yeah, St. Clair takes it 2-0. <laughs> looked really good, and I can't wait to see them some more because they looked so good in this series. He hugged. Looked totally different now than he did in the oh, preseason. Yeah. So definitely, definitely. going to be something to watch out for. 
for the rest of this season. And I, I can't wait to see what else he's got in the bag. Cause, and I can't wait to see what Ricky has in the bag too. Cause oh my God, Jarvin yeah. in the top lane, who even, no one plays that. And he made it look like it should, everyone should be playing it. So that's yeah. going to be it though. St. Clair takes it 2-0. Thank you everyone. Thank you production team. You guys are awesome. And uh, yeah, uh, it's going to be a good night. It's John Bilbang Zudima, Ash, Ash Nutter signing off. See you soon. Bye.